Welcome back to Applied Biological Materials Cell Culture Series. In this video, we will introduce a recombinant adenovirus expression system. Viral vectors are tools commonly used to express exogenous genetic materials in vivo or in vitro. Among them, the most commonly used viral vectors are retrovirus, lentivirus, adenovirus, and adeno-associated virus. Adenovirus, or AD, has two common serotypes, type 2 and type 5. AD is a non-enveloped virus with a linear double-stranded DNA genome. Its nucleocapsid consists of many proteins with three major types, fiber, pentin, and hexin. The hexin is a structural basis of adenovirus and composes most of the viral capsid. Both the fiber and pentin-based proteins are for receptor binding and internalization of the adenovirus into host cells. All serotypes of adenoviruses use Kuksaki and adenovirus receptor CAR as a primary receptor on the host cell. After initial attachment via CAR, the pentin binds to the integrin receptors located on the surface of the cell. Next, the binding induces a virus uptake by the host cell via endocytosis. Once inside the host cell, the capsid of the virus is dismantled and the core protein-coded viral genome is transported into a nucleus. In contrast to other viruses, adenovirus DNA does not integrate into the host genome and instead remains in an episomal state. Once the adenovirus enters a host cell, the first gene to be expressed is an E1A gene. The presence of the E1A gene triggers the expression of the delayed early genes E1B, E2, E3, and E4 transcription units. The expression of adenoviral E1B, E2, E3, and E4 genes will alter the expression of a group of cellular genes in the host cell to facilitate adenovirus replication. ITR refers to the inverted terminal repeat sequences at the end of each genome, which contains all the elements necessary for replication and packaging. Recombinant AD expression vectors exploit the high nuclear transfer efficiency and the low pathogenicity of the virus to deliver genes to a host cell. Adenovirus vectors can be used in vaccines where the vector expresses a foreign antigenic protein. Also, adenovirus vectors can be used in gene therapy where the vector expresses a functional protein to correct a genetic defect. For the first generation vectors, the E1 gene region is replaced by the transgene or therapeutic gene to be delivered to a target cell with a high activity promoter, such as cytomegalovirus immediate early promoter. In order to propagate the recombinant virus that lacks E1 transgene expression, a complementing producer line such as HEC293 or PERC6 is required. Both cell lines are stable enough to express a viral E1A and E1B proteins. Despite the E1 and E3 deletion, there is evidence that shows viral genes are still expressed at low levels in cells transduced with first-generation vectors. This can cause direct toxicity and immune response in vivo. The second-generation vectors are constructed with additional deletions of E2 or E4 function, which improved transgene persistence and decreased inflammatory response. However, these vectors still exhibit leaky expression of viral genes, the advantage is that the second-generation recombinant vectors can accommodate bigger transgene sizes. The construction of the vector genome usually involves direct cloning recombination or transposition techniques in E. coli cells. Next, the vector is processed and released from the plasmid or cosmid backbone, and then transfected into a complementing producer cell lines for virus packaging.
helper-dependent adenovirus, also known as HDAD vectors, or gutless adenovirus vectors, have had all viral coding genes deleted. Therefore, HDAD vectors have greatly reduced toxicity and immunogenicity in vivo, enabling long-term transgene expression. Because they lack viral coding genes, they require a helper virus in order to be produced. During the production stage, E1 and recombinase expressing producer cells are transfected with recombinant HDAD vector DNA. The HDAD vector DNA carries a transgene and co-infects with the helper virus. Inside the producing cells, the packaging signal in the helper virus is excised by recombinase, making it unable to be packaged into viral particles. However, the helper virus still expresses regulatory and structural proteins required for replication and packaging of HDAD vector DNA. The disadvantage of helper-dependent adenovirus vectors is that an extra step is required for viral purification. While most replication incompetent adenovirus vectors are used in research, it is not uncommon to have replication competent adenovirus for clinical trials. In fact, conditionally replication competent adenoviruses are often exploited for their cytotoxicity and are used exclusively on targeting tumor cells. Cancer cells are more permissive to adenovirus replication because the gene expression pattern of cancer cells greatly facilitates adenovirus replication. A general procedure of adenovirus amplification begins with the transfection of producer cells with recombinant replication defective adenovirus vector carrying the transgene. The vector viruses are replicated and packaged in the producer cells. After several rounds of infection using the producer cells with the vector lysate for amplification, transgene vector particles are purified and then used to infect the targeted cells. Many different viruses are being developed as gene transfer vectors, but the most advanced ones are adenovirus, retrovirus, including lentivirus, and adeno-associated virus. One of the major advantages of adenoviral vectors is that they provide the most efficient gene transfer among other viral vector systems for many cell types. Since they do not integrate into the host cell genome, there are low disturbances in genes. As well, they are not suitable for long-term correction of chronic disorders but suitable for therapeutics that need high transient expression. Adenovirus vectors can be for clinical use, such as for gene therapy and vaccination. Replication defective adenovirus based vectors have also been used to treat cancer and tuberculosis. At ABM, we offer a comprehensive library of adenoviruses that contain full-length ORFs for human, mouse, and rat genes. For more information on adenovirus techniques or cell culture techniques, please check out our knowledge base by clicking the link in the description below. If you enjoyed watching this video, Check out our other video series and subscribe to get the latest updates. Thank you for watching!